For the last six months, the world has been given a front row seat to the madness that is the British monarchy. Folks, what was this all about? These last six months, what was all the lies and the theater, the body doubles, the fake pictures? What was it all for? First off, let me just say that I am relieved that Kate and the children are okay. There are obviously a lot of questions, but before I continue, let me just say that I am glad that Kate is fine. The British media has tried to portray the public as trolls simply for expressing concern when it is obvious that they were hiding something from the very beginning. Now, folks, if you were left with a dizzying feeling, it's not because you are a troll. It's because you know you've been hoodwinked, lied to, and gaslit over these six months. First, they said the surgery was sudden. Then they said it was planned. Can't be sudden and planned at the same time. Then at the same time, they were quick to state that it had nothing to do with cancer, even though nobody asked. Then later on, the image on the bench said that cancer had been present. Notice the use of the passive language there, folks. She never actually said she had cancer but that whatever was removed during surgery was found to be cancerous? I don't know, more confusion. Then in between all that, we were subjected to a barrage of lies and conflicting stories. And someone wrote in the comments the other day, Catherine owes you nothing. And I'm sure you've seen this refrain all over the internet that Kate somehow owes the public nothing. And I just want to address this narrative here that I think it's complete bullshit. Kate absolutely owes the public an explanation. Kate is not a private citizen. I don't know, I don't need to know her medical history or what she does in her bedroom, but at the very least, she owes it to the public to let them know that she is still alive. That's all. Nobody needs to know her personal business, just that she is still alive. The entire British monarchy, beginning with Charles, owe the public at the very least an apology. These people prancing around in their garish parades with their unearned riches and multiple tracts of land that's been passed down to them all while living off the taxpayers, they absolutely owe us something. They owe us at the very least to be forthcoming. Folks, this is supposed to be the head of state of the British government. And you don't think they owe you to at least be honest and transparent? Why do these people have such little respect for themselves? The British monarchy is treating their subjects like doormats. And you're paying for the privilege to be treated like a doormat. And you don't think they at least owe you the truth? What is wrong with these people? Then you have these journalists. And let me tell you, these journalists could give the North Koreans a few lessons in propaganda, gloating as if they've won something. And folks, this is the part that probably annoys me the most. Take a look at this article. Lesser mortals would have stayed home? What the fuck does that statement even mean? Are you telling me that hiding for six months because you have supposedly have cancer is brave? Especially when it's your literal job to be out in the public. Kate receives an annual salary from the taxpayers of over $2 million just to show up and cut ribbons and wave to the peasants. And the press wants to call her brave 
for disappearing for six months? What a slap in the face for people who actually have to work for a living and who actually have cancer and don't have the luxury of going missing for six days, let alone six months. And that's if you believe the cancer story, because folks, I still don't believe that that's what this was all about. I still think it's a cover for something else. But thankfully, it's not a cover for what I previously thought. So what was all this, the cancer story and AI videos and farm shop body doubles and numerous photoshopped pictures of Kate and the kids? What was it all for? Well, folks, after watching that farce that took place yesterday, it is obvious to me that these people are no longer together. And there are a lot of people who had put forward that theory that the whole disappearing act was about divorce negotiations. I didn't think it was because I thought that if Kate were still around, she would have she would have at least sent some message out to the public letting them know that she was okay. So where did she go? I think the closest we got to finding out was this Daily Beast article that stated that she was surrounded by her birth family. And I'm assuming that wherever she was hiding, her parents are there as well. So was Kate in hiding? I think she was. I think that at some time around Christmas, William and her had a fight and she took off with the kids William, being the prideful, egotistical narcissist that he is, could not bring himself to tell the truth for a couple of reasons. One, he needs to present the illusion of a happy marriage to the public. And two, he needs to present the illusion of a happy marriage to his brother, with whom he is forever locked in a rivalry. Because if you remember, throughout all this drama, the press kept putting out these random reports, all with the aim of making it seem like Harry wants to come back. Harry is in tears. Harry is fuming. Folks, this is all William. And the fact that the British press has effectively become his mouthpiece should be enough argument to do away with this whole charade. Because folks, what an insult. What an absolute shit show. You know, no matter what you want to say about Queen Elizabeth II, she was the last responsible and respected monarch. There's a quote by Queen Elizabeth that says, I have to be seen to be believed. This statement sums up why her reign lasted as long as it did. Responsibility, transparency, honesty, forthrightness, all attributes pitifully lacking in this current crop of royals. Running away for six months because you have cancer is not brave. There is nothing brave about abdicating your responsibility to your quote-unquote subjects. And that's why I don't believe the cancer narrative at all. Now take a look at this latest photo of William with the kids. You know what this is giving? This is giving, I finally got you back. That's what this is giving. A day before this trooping nonsense, we had this report that William paid a visit to MI6. Well, what for? William isn't head of state. William isn't a member of parliament. Why is he visiting MI6? Folks, I think that he's been looking for Kate and the two younger children during all this time. That would explain all the reports going back from February when they kept pushing back the dates that she was supposedly going to return. 
And even leading up to yesterday, there was a lot of uncertainty. It was, is she or isn't she? Will she or won't she? And folks, does this look like a person who isn't well enough to show up for an event, to cut some ribbons, or at the very least, wave to a crowd? If she looks this well, why was there a need for all the fake photographs if she was actually there? I think William went to MI6 to find out where she is. I think they've known all along where she was and that she was under some kind of protection because she was possibly in fear of her life, maybe due to something he may have done to her. And I think he went there to work out some kind of deal for her to show up to stop these damned rumors once and for all. Because folks, if he could have posed for a picture with his kids before, he would have done so. This picture says, I got you back, and now you're never going to leave. So folks, now that this is all over, or at least this chapter in the saga is, is over, at least we can move on. And I feel relieved for a number of reasons. I'm relieved mainly for the children, that they are okay, and that they have not lost their mom. And many people have asked me, well, why I don't talk about anything else? And it was mainly because these videos take a lot of time to put together. I don't really do the five-minute off-the-cuff remark videos. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not for me. I source all my information from articles put out by the press. I don't engage in disinformation. I have to gather these articles, analyze them, compile them, and then edit. There's simply not enough hours in the day to talk about other topics. But I think now I will start to explore other topics. And I would like to think that what transpired yesterday is due in part to the pressure that this and other channels that have been covering this mystery, as well as the public on social media, I'd like to think that we all had some role in forcing them to produce proof of life. And although many questions remain, I feel like I can now move on to other things. So drop a line, let me know what you think. Do you still believe that Kate has cancer or do you think this is just about a broken relationship or even an elaborate hoax?